So have the markets bottomed out yet? Are we reaching the end of this whole selling? Can we start to rebound and find some stability? I think that is the question that is in most people's mind right now. I mean, over the past uh, few weeks to one or two months, we have seen weakness in the markets again due to the Federal Reserve coming out and you know talking about rate hikes and they have like implemented uh, two rate hikes, one in March by 25 basis points, 0.25%, and just one like one or two weeks back by 0.5%. And you know the market started to see a bit of weakness because there are talks on more aggressive rate hikes. So what is the outlook right now for the markets, the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, the Nasdaq, and even the STI? Hey guys, Joey here, top to remind you, trader in Philips Securities. And in this video, we'll be looking at the markets, right? we'll be looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, the Nasdaq, and the STI. We'll look at some of the levels that you want to take note of and where we could potentially still see selling and where we can potentially hit to as well in the short term and even in the longer term, is there some signs of uh, bearishness coming to the markets and should we be actually careful or should we actually be a good opportunity to start getting in on some of those good stocks as well? Right? So we dive into the markets, all right? These four markets, Dow Jones, S&P 500, NASDAQ and the STI to see what it says. And you know, right now, I would say that the main thing that people are focusing on would be inflationary data. So news have came out again in terms of inflationary data. After hiking rates by two times, we are still seeing very, very high inflation. And that's where you know, there are talks about the Fed uh, kind of like hiking rates more aggressively. All right? And that's not a good thing because if they hike rates too much, and that's where it will kind of like affect the economic growth, all right? and it affects the economic growth, there could be a risk of a recession all right i think there's this r word that comes up quite uh, many times over the past few weeks as well that talks about a recession if you hike rates too fast but at the same time if you don't hike rates inflation will get out of control so it's a very fine balance and you know the fed have come out and say that you know by the end of 2022 all right most likely they'll hike rates to be around that um two percent so right now it's about 0.75 percent and you you know by end of the year it'll be about two percent but if they do it too quickly you'll be not so good for the economy if they do it too slow inflation will still stay high all right so all this uncertainty is adding up to uh kind of like lead to negativity all right and bearish sentiments in the market and this is the reason why we are seeing selling right so let's dive into these markets right now dow jones nasdaq s p 500 and even the sti to see where we are right now what are the potential downside? What are some of the levels whereby you know, we could potentially, hopefully see some stability all right, or some good bargain hunting coming back and hopefully we find some good uh, ground or footing at these support levels for a potential rebound for the entire market. So this is the Dow Jones, right? Trading at about 31,834, right? So just to give you a quick brief of what has happened uh, over the past one to two years, you can see that was where uh, we sold off in COVID in 2020. We went from like about 28, 29,000 all the way to 19,000 and we staged a really good recovery, right? You can see that that was when uh, somewhere around um, September of 2020, this moving average, the red line, 100 days moving average, it kind of like cross above the blue line and both of these lines started to point out. So it was a really, really good rally somewhere around, you know, uh, August uh, 2020, all the way up to 2021, November, December, and that's where we are sitting, uh, starting to see a bit of weakness, a bit of profit taking and some sideways consolidation. So this is the Dow Jones, you can see that very, very strong uptrend, all right, a red line, 100 days above the 200 days moving average, all the way up. But recently, all right, somewhere around like, April, right? Somewhere around April, right? Here you can see that this red line, the 100 days moving average, have finally, all right, crossed down below the blue line, below the 200 days moving. So in terms of the trend, right, there could be some signs of it turning from up to a downwards direction in terms of the mid to long term trend. So that's one sign that you need to be careful of. And in the short term, all right, um, we were actually holding quite well above this like 34,000 level, but you can see that somewhere around March, uh, when we had the first rate hike, we kind of broke that level, rebounded a bit, and we came back down below this 34,000 level again. All right, but it doesn't matter because there is this 32,000 level whereby we have been holding, I would say, for more than a year, all right, and pretty much the whole of 2021, right? So this 32,000 level is quite key, and we want to really stay above this level. I mean, we can see this was in March, we rebounded. And you know, if you can kind of like see a, a good rebound from here, there's some sign of stability. But the point here is that uh, we have broken this 
32,000 level um, just over the past few days. So it's like 31, 8, 3, 4. So not a good thing, not a good thing. I mean, if we stay below that 32,000, unfortunately, that is where we can see a little bit more selling in the short term all the way to the next key support levels. And it can be all the way from 29,500 to that 30. 000, right 30 three zero 30 thousand that level is key i think that is a psychological uh, level as well it's pretty much back to where we were in 2020 november and you can see that was where uh it was originally the resistance level we held above and the uptrend really started and we started to push all the way up uh you know from from 2020 all the way up to like about that 37 thousand that is pretty much the upside we've experienced right after breaking that uh resistance level but the, thing here is that you know this resistance would now be the support level so about 29,500 to 30,000 I think that could potentially be a bit of downside all right to there all right especially if we stay below this 32,000 in the next few days all right so that is for Dow Jones right there are definitely some signs of weakness I mean when we actually go below that 34 and of course this 32 don't seem to be holding as well so you want to be careful so back to the question has the dow jones um, bottom out yet is it time to rush to get in all right so very simple i would say that anything below 32,000, all right that's where we can see uh some selling all right and how do we know whether a bottom has been found normally what we see is you know like the markets finding some good support it's rebounded a couple of times two or three times from the support level and that's where it, it could be a sign of like some stability all right and a potential rebound or maybe some signs of the trend uh, stabilizing in terms of the downtrend all right turning side, slightly sideways and then potentially moving up right so in terms of the price what could happen would be this right here you see prices kind of like moving down or right, found a bit of support here rebound down up and eventually it might start to just uh, push back up above that uh, 32,000 level all right this 32,000 as I say would be key if we can actually break up above this level it'd be like the market finding new highs or moving out of its lower consolidation phase right does it make sense all right so if it goes up to a higher consolidation phase that would be a good sign of a bottom being found all right or it could be the moving averages as well as I say right all these moving averages are all pretty much pointing now down now all right the green pointing down rate 100 days moving average pointing down all right so uh this starts to consolidate a little bit all right assuming we find a support around the 30,000 it consolidates you, this moving averages to start to you know move sideways all right move sideways a little bit and it might start to head up and what could happen what could point towards a bottoming as well would be uh the 20 days moving average and the 100 days moving average so just put your attention to this um green line so this green line would be the 20 days moving average look, look at this right here so when covid actually happened you can see that this was somewhere around like february march 2020 this green line the 20 days moving average actually crossed down uh below the 100 days moving average and you can see prices started to just push down 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 and when this happened the 20 days moving average started to move down so you kind of like found a bottom here around 18 to 19 thousand when COVID hit and then look at this right here the 20 days moving average green line managed to climb back above the 100 days moving average and eventually you can see that both the green and the red started to point up so that's a sign of the market also bottoming out i mean you can see that it kind of like you know break above this uh, resistance level that would be like the 25,000. all right so you kind of went above the twenty-five thousand, and this crossover actually happened green went above the red so there's a sign of a bottoming out as well in terms of the market starting to push higher so yeah that could happen right so right now you can see the green is still below the red so as it starts to, to hit lower hopefully you found a bit of support here it might you know price might start to consolidate here the green goes below the rates is still below the red still and eventually if the green line right goes back up above the red line like what we see over here right 20 days moving average above the 100 days moving average and if price were to go back up above 32,000 that could be a sign that the market has come like bottom and we could potentially see a reversal uh, back up again okay let's move on to the s and p 500 index and we are currently trading about 3,935 right so we are kind of like broken this uh, pretty critical support level around the 4,000 to like about 4,001 look at this right here you can see that we were pretty much holding quite well since like 2021 for like more than a year above this level the uptrend actually started to push up 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 went to around at 4,008 and that's where some signs of weakness started to come back in look at this right here the moving areas have started to turn down as well so yeah just about two or three weeks back same thing like Dow Jones, this red line, the 100 days moving average 
have finally crossed below the blue line so there are definitely some signs of the trend uh, turning down in the mid to long term right look at this right here so red below the blue not a good thing i mean look look at this rally right this was like after covid right you started to rebound up the red line went above the blue and it was pretty much a very strong uptrend when that happened right so red above the blue good all right started to push up in fact we can draw what we call an upward sloping uh, channel support line all the way here you can see it rebounded it nearly rebounded this is what we call a channel support line but somewhere around like you know january february when it talks about rate hike uh, we kind of broke some of the support level like the 4006 4005 and that's where some selling actually happens right so let me just remove this from for you right now all right and yeah so that is the thing right so we have kind of like seen a little bit of weakness in the trend turning all right from the upwards direction to a downwards direction based on the moving averages and in terms of the prices we have also broken this support level right here at the 4000 to 4050 right now it's like 3935 so not a good thing not a good thing uh, potentially we can see a little bit of downside all the way to the next support level somewhere around the 3008 to maybe the 3007 level you can see this is pretty much where we were supported somewhere in 2021 all right just about a year back we rebounded about one two or three times so that could potentially be a little bit of support hopefully we see some bargain hunting uh, happening there again so if the 3007 were to break down as well then potentially we may head towards the next support at about the 3006 which would be quite critical you can see that we are pretty much back to uh, where we were somewhere in like 20 20 all right november there was originally the resistance and when we broke up you can see the uptrend really started all the way until like um december last year all right so yeah 3006 to 3007 i think this would pretty much be uh, the near-term support that we can expect all right some bargain hunting and hopefully some stability in the prices and hopefully that would be a bottom if not then we might actually see more selling so the key data to focus on over the next few months would be the cpi data all right so i think cpi is very important and that's where people are looking at inflation whether it's still high or whether it's like kind of like cooling off a bit because of the past two rate hikes that has already been done all right but if you know cpi numbers are still high inflation is still at an all-time high and it's not coming down then the fed would have no choice but to hike rates even more all right and if that happens that is where it could derail the whole entire economic recovery it can even lead to a recession like i just mentioned so but if you know inflation were to cool off and we're seeing that you know the past two rate hike is actually working all right things are starting to to cool off prices cpi numbers are coming down yes then the fed might not have to be too aggressive right and yeah it wouldn't impact the economy that much as well all right, so this is the S&P 500, all right, potential downside, 3006 to 3007, and these are all pretty good uh, zones whereby hopefully we see some stability there, all right, and it could actually be a bottom as well, all right, depending on whether we can find a, a rebound from here a couple of times, stability in terms of prices uh, going there as well, that will all point towards a rebound, and of course, if the moving averages all start to turn up as well, like what I've talked about for the Dow Jones. Okay, so this is the NASDAQ here. Quick one, uh, looks similar to the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. You can see that we were pretty much uh, you know, pushing upwards since like 2020 to 2021, really strong uptrend. All right, hit a high somewhere around like November, December, and then same thing, there were some signs of the trend turning down from the moving averages, right? So just a couple of months back, I think two months back, you can see that this red line, the 100 days moving average, same thing, have crossed down below the blue line, which is the 200 days moving average. So same thing, there are definitely some signs of the trend uh, turning down from the longer term moving average, right? The, the longer term to mid term trend turning down as well. And of course, the short term we did you know kind of like broke this 20 days moving average line pointing down and of course this level is critical right this level is the 12,000 level look at this right here it was originally the resistance in 2020 and when we broke this um, you know 12,000 you can see the rally started all the way to like 16,000 and now all right this 12,000 unfortunately over the past week itself past few days we have broke below the 12,000. If you can come like, you know, stay above the 12,000, that's actually a good thing. We might go to like 13 and eventually if it breaks 13, you can push higher. But unfortunately, it seems like we have broken this 12,000. So downside can be all the way to that 11 to maybe that psychological 10, thousand level i think this ten thousand level would be key first of all it's a psychological level people look at numbers like the one thousand five thousand ten thousand these are all psychological level you can see that originally uh somewhere in 2020 just after covid look at this right here we sold off in covid all right went all the way down to like seven thousand rebounded and when we broke this 10,000, right? When we broke this 10,000, you can see that that was where the uptrend really started, right? It really started all the way uh, from like May or 
April 2020 all the way up here until like December last year. So that was where it, the uptrend really started. And this 10,000 would now be a firm psychological resistance to a psychological support level. And this level is critical. I think we can see some good support holding there, you know, some good bargain hunting, hopefully some good news coming out from the inflation, CPI numbers. I think that those are all good signs of a rebound, all right, a potential bottoming out of the entire uh, market as well. Uh, if it can happen, that would be good. I think right here, this level is key. So we might see a bit of downwards move up, down might consolidate. Hopefully we see bottoms out right here a few good candles with my markets you know our prices are holding and eventually it breaks back above the 12,000 these are all signs that uh, it has bottom and we could see a good reversal back up again okay so let's take a look at this Singapore market the Straits Times Index the STI um, currently trading at about 3165 right 3165 you can see that it looks a little bit different from the three US market, the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and even the Nasdaq, right? Um, in terms of the longer term trend, you can see that we are still pretty much in a good uh, mid to long term up trend. So look at this right here, the red line, uh, 100 days moving average across above the blue line somewhere in uh, 2020, December, and that's where the uptrend really started. It pushed up from like about 2008, to about 3,450 and we are seeing a bit of weakness but overall the longer term trend has not really turned down yet because for the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq you can see that uh, the rate like 100 days moving egg average actually went below the 200 days moving average and that's a sign of the trend turning from uh, upwards direction to a downwards direction in the mid to long term but in the STI you can see that the red and blue they are still pretty much pointing up right now right the red and blue is pointing up the red is still above the blue so it is still looking quite okay in terms of the longer term trend of course in the short term we did break um, some of those key support levels like the 3300 look at this right here this is the 3300 we were pretty much consolidating from 3003 to 3450 and there are a couple of what we call uh, selling that happened at this 3450 something like what we call a double top right about 3450 you can see touch came down we touch came down and recently same thing we were holding above the 3003 but it seems like it didn't hold and we kind of like just sold off and went below 3003 all right and the next support would be actually the 3200 level right this 3200 level would be key all right and it's about like 3150 to 3002 and that was pretty much where we were just after uh the first rate hikes was um now as you can see right here in March when the first rate hike was implemented like 0.25% in March or right, you can see the market started to rebound as well all right so we are pretty much back to this level 3150 to 3002 all right and that's where some support hopefully can come back for the Singapore market as well around 3150 to 3002 but I think the key level to take note would be the psychological 3000 level look at this right here i think this 3000 would be key all right this 3000 would be key look at this pretty much back to where we were in uh, march last year 2021 we were holding really well above the 3000 so yeah i will see a little bit more weakness from the us side potentially some selling can actually happen all the way uh, below 3002 or to maybe towards the 3001 to that 3000 that could potentially be the downside all the way to around 3000 all right and why 3000 let's say right we have rebounded a couple of times one time right this was somewhere in uh, may 2021 you can see rebounded here rebounded we neared it all right so a couple of times that by we got rebounded from this 3000 or we neared it and buyers started to came out and you know the market started to push even higher all right so this 3000 level would be key right this is a psychological level as well all right and as long as we hold here i think for the entire singapore market the mid to long term uptrend still looks intact all right if you can hold above the 3000 or maybe even above the 3001 that would be even better all right so it looks a little bit different from the st for the sti i mean compared to the us markets whereby uh the downtrend has kind of like already played out over the past few weeks or so past one or two months the moving averages are all starting to turn down as i mentioned but for singapore you can see that it's still holding quite well right the moving averages have not really turned down yet only for the short term uh, in terms of the short term, yes, we did break that 3,300 level right here and then selling actually happened, which is normal, right? In the short term, we can see some selling as it breaks certain support like this, 3,003. So now potentially 3,001 to 3,000, hopefully we see some good support coming back again. So yes, guys, that 
there we have it, we have covered the Dow Jones, S&P 500, NASDAQ, and of course the Singapore STI. So I hope you have a clearer picture of where we are for each of the different markets, all right, and what are some of the good support levels whereby hopefully, all right, hopefully we see some uh, bargain hunting coming back or a good bottom potentially being found as well, all right? As I say for bottom, we want to see, uh, you know, in indexes kind of hitting to the level, touching it, rebounding from it a couple of times, and hopefully finding new highs that could be a sign for bottom or we can also look at the moving averages in terms of uh, the 20 days moving average, the green lines I talk about and the 100 days moving average as well. So if the green line uh, which you cross back above the red line, that could be some signs of the trend uh, reversing back up as well from like a bit of a downtrend to an uptrend. Like what we have seen, I think I mentioned for one of the, the markets whereby when we see the green line went above the blue line, I'm uh, sorry, went above the red line and even the blue line, all right, that's where uh, the markets really started to rebound, the trend started to turn up and uh, started to see more upside all right so i hope you like this video and you have a good picture of the markets right now all right and if you do like this video guys go ahead to give me a like it will definitely help out the channel and of course smash the subscribe button as well so that you will not miss out on any videos like this all right so joey here thank you so much for watching let me know in the comments below what are your thoughts on the markets the us market the singapore market let me know in the comments below and i'll do my best to reply to each and every one of you all right so joey here thank you so much for watching take care